Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over how to use sidechain compression in multiband dynamics. With the release of Studio One version 5, all dynamic processors have a sidechain input capability added to them. This goes to your gates, your expanders, and your multiband dynamics. If you don't already know, sidechain compression is when you send the signal of one source to the compressor of something else. Very famously is using your kick drum to trigger your bass compressor just to duck it out of the way. But now that every dynamic processor has sidechain, maybe we can just affect certain frequency ranges with multiband dynamics. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look. So here we are inside of the session, and it is just something I put together really quickly. It's dead simple. It's just a kick and snare and hat pattern and a long droning bass note. With nothing else going on, it sounds like this. So pretty straightforward. Four on the floor kick, snares on a couple off beats, and then on the fourth beat, and then just some hi-hats with the probability turned down and you'll notice that they'll never be the same. That's because none of these are gonna get recorded and those probabilities are gonna be constantly changing. In your standard setup for sidechain compression, what you'll do is put a compressor on your bass track. And that's what I have here. It's the Studio One stock compressor. And right now it's in bypass, but I'll show you sidechain is active and it's getting triggered from just our kick drum right now. That's just to really show the example. When we turn this on, Every time the kick drum hits, the bass is gonna get pushed out of the way. And this is the entire bass. So you're gonna get that real pumping sound. I've put some really extreme settings here just so that you guys can hear it. it sounds like this. So you can hear when the kick drum hits, that bass is pushed way out of the way, and then it swells back up, creating that pumping and breathing sound. I also have it timed so that it's just out of the way, long enough for the kick drum transient to come through, and then comes back up waiting for the next kick hit. But this is affecting the entire bass sound. When the kick hits, all of the bass, including the top end, is getting pushed out of the way. And this might be what you're going for. But if you just want the sub of your bass pushed out of the way so that the punchy sound of the kick can come through and then the bass comes back up, that's when we can do multiband dynamics that are side-chained from our kick drum. I'm gonna put this compressor into bypass and open up multiband dynamics. The multiband dynamics plugin is only available for Studio One professional users or members of Presona Sphere because you already have Studio One 5 but there are other multiband dynamic processors out there that allow for sidechain input, most notably the FabFilter Pro MB. That one definitely has this function. So now let's take a look at what's going on with our multiband dynamics. It's still in bypass right now, but I'll take it out just for the sake of seeing things. And what I've done is very similar settings to just the standard compressor, but I put the very lows the high mids and the highs into bypass, so they are not getting compressed at all in this example. All we're doing is taking the low mids and the mids and pushing them out of the way when the kick is hitting. We still have very similar settings for our attack and release times. The attack is as fast as it can go, and the release is around 26 milliseconds. So we are gonna get that same pumping effect, but we're only gonna get it to the low mids and mids. Everything above 54 hertz and all the way up to 1.2K. So it's a very large region, but that's the great thing about multiband dynamics is I can go in and adjust these regions and really fine tune what area of my base is gonna get ducked out of the way for the kick drum. So with this engaged and out of bypass, it sounds like this. we're still getting that pumping effect for our bass. 
but the top end of it is still coming through because everything in the high mids and the highs are not being compressed at all. So you get the attack of the bass and some of the buzz to it, but the mids and the low mids are getting ducked out of the way of the kick drum. And that's just because we have those two bands enabled. If we were gonna change things up, we could bypass all of the bands and only turn on the low bands. This will be the only one affected by the kick drum and it will help with phase differences between your kick drum's low end and your bass low end. That's where you're gonna have a lot of phase or polarity issues. When the kick hits and the subs of the kick, you don't want them conflicting with your bass. So you can do multiband dynamics and get the low end of the bass out of the way for the kick drum for just the right amount of time so that the punch is there and then have the bass come back in and really fill out your song. The attack and release times are gonna be very important when you're setting up the compression settings for multiband dynamics like this or just side chain bass compression in general. That's where you'll really be able to dial in the sound of that pumping effect that you might be going for. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.